Let's just come together now in the quietness of that presence in the heart. In a time of a world seeking to find itself, let us bring that strength that comes within each of our hearts to let the light shine. So let us remember before God the great need of all humankind and that we may pray to God. We may quiet the fretful mind of every day. Let us open our hearts to our Father, Mother, God and to Christ the Son, to the Holy Trinity of wisdom, love and power. In the holy name of Christ, by the Christ light in the hearts of all people, we call upon the great angels of Christ. We feel their presence and their power. We attune ourselves to the prayers of all men and women of good will. And being thus prepared and ready before God, with all the will of our minds, with all the love of our deepest hearts, we send forth the light. We send it forth as a great star of light, a blazing star, withstanding, overcoming all evil, triumphant over darkness and death, a star of the Christ light. By all the power of Christ within our hearts, we send forth the light. We hold in the heart of the Christ star the leaders and peoples of the Americas, the soul of the Americas. May the light of the Christ star awaken the wisdom of the ancient sun brothers in the hearts and the minds of the people of the Americas to bring peace, healing, and brotherhood to all life. And now let us hold within this great healing star anyone known to us personally who is in need of help or healing. And we hold them in the silence, and of course including our immediate family, Paige Allen and Joni and Danny Guthrie, so many others, just holding them in the heart of the star with all the strength and resilience of the power of love enfolding and upholding each one. And we thank you, Lord, for your presence and for the blessing of your healing grace upon these, your family. Amen. Amen. Amen.
morning, everyone. And I'll be really happy when there's a railing. <laughs> it's on order. <laughs> it gets good. All right, healing circle. Let us open our hearts to the Christ power, wisdom, and love as together we call upon the angels of healing to draw close. We come into the soft radiance of this love as we focus and hold the healing light of the Christ star on this prayer. For the healing of the souls of not only America, but of all the nations of the world who have allowed their leaders to pull them into senseless wars for the enrichment of the few and at the cost of death, massive suffering and impoverishment for the many. Let there be enough of this barbarism. Let there be honest and constructive diplomacy to settle all disagreements. May the lies, deceptions, and agendas on all sides of every conflict be exposed and made accountable, and may true and lasting peace finally prevail on planet Earth. We pray this in thy name, O Lord. Let it be so, and according to thy will. With hearts full of love and gratitude, we give our grateful thanks. Amen. Jane has chosen a reading from um, an inner teaching given in 1953 by White Eagle. We would speak to you about the kingdom of God within you. You do not at present realize the latent powers within yourself. But a time is coming when these God powers in man will be recognized, cultivated, released, and used for the glory of God and the blessings of man. And I just want to make a note here, that was 70 years ago. It's about time this happens. It's time. Mankind has a great part to play in God's creation. So as the secrets of nature are being rapidly revealed, you deeply need to comprehend the spiritual life which can be yours. In your Bible are the words, God created man in his own image. Even with limited understanding, you are able to recognize God as omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, the force or influence. Demonstrations of love and wise guidance which all of you have received have convinced you of an intelligent and loving power which is behind your life. Sometimes it directs you into channels which you do not like and you show your dislike by clothing yourself in sorrow. You say then, I am in trouble because these things have gone wrong. I thought I wanted this, that, or the other thing, and it did not happen. But when you become more enlightened and study the spiritual law, you are bound to admit that God's laws are just and perfect and true. So whatever happens to you in your outer life, although it may seem undesirable from your point of view, Nevertheless, there is always a compensating power which brings something helpful, comforting, and blessed. If you can apply this incident to your own life and accept what happens, you will learn in time the value of acceptance. Accept knowing that God is wise in His giving and wiser still in His taking away. The whole point is that as the soul evolves and expands in God consciousness, it cannot really lose anything. 
for then it knows that nothing is lost in God's creation. Only a limited consciousness prevents that soul from recognizing that all is here, all is present. There is no separation when you become conscious of the world of spirit, when you can expand your consciousness beyond the limitations of the mortal mind and brain. You need just now to be reminded of your destiny, of the path upon which your feet have been set. Remember that you are not only a physical body, so that you cannot and will not die. You will not even know when your own death takes place. You will be exactly the same when you have stepped out of your body as you are here and now while in your body. The important thing to realize is that the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven does not mean some far distant country to which you will go when you have released your body. It is here with you now and you are here on earth encased in matter to labor for and earn the tools which you need to carve your road into that glorious heavenly state of life, which can be reached only through your own effort and spiritual unfoldment. You have been told that if you faithfully believe in the Lord Jesus, he will save you. It's true, but not without your own work and effort, for it is not said what's it is not said whatsoever a man sows that he shall surely reap. So thoughts, words, and deeds, deeds are the seeds which are daily sown on earth. The result of this sowing is certain. We do not preach at you. We are just giving you truth. For this same truth you can prove for yourselves very simply. If things are difficult for you tomorrow morning and you allow yourself to get worked up about them, life will seem very unpleasant. If on the other hand you remember that the things of earth are not all important, you will remain happy. So if you are hasty, you will get into difficulties, but if you are patient and calmly look to God for the directions you need, then all will be well. Your actions are like sowing seeds, which are going to be reaped at some time in the soul as well as in the bodily life, and which will also shape your whole future life. This is the perfect law, and it is inescapable. But we must also emphasize this point, that together with this law of karma is a complementary law which the East calls Dharma. Now, Dharma means opportunity, which is always given to you to make the best of all circumstances and conditions, or the opportunity for the expression of the highest and the best in you, as well as the law of cause and effect, strict, just, perfect, and true. There is also the law of God's mercy, Dharma is the demonstration of God's mercy. A wise child looks up to God. God is merciful to that child, but he does not say, you will not have to work or suffer. You will not have to work out your karma. Instead, he is saying, my child, my love is with you and will help you. God's love is God's mercy. God can thus heal all wounds, helping his children to go through their self-created karma. The mercy of God is again related to the mercy of man. In the degree that you show mercy, so God releases mercy too. In the same way, all people who worship God in spirit and in truth are serving humanity, but it must be humble, true, and simple worship. It means this, dear ones, that in daily life, instead of grumbling, instead of complaining of this, that, and the other, you are praising God for all his gifts. And the greatest of these is life itself, 
and the ever-growing consciousness of a life that is pure, more harmonious, more beautiful than anything yet known upon the earth. What a gracious path lies before each of us. O oh Lord, how wonderful are your blessings. Amen. Good morning. I don't know what that buzzing was all about, Kamal, in this, in the mics. It's gone at the moment. Yes. Uh, we'll talk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. Because I was going to say we'll turn them off if if we're buzzing along. <clears throat> All right. Well, our subject is acceptance. That's a wonderful word, actually, acceptance. A very interesting word. It means to consent to receive or undertake something offered. So what is offered or brought to mind at this time of year? Something of the highest order a gateway there for the opening to a higher state of life. Rather than thinking that acceptance is a decision made in a resigned state of mind, oh, I accept this, it's a wonderful positive affirmation, it can be, to accept the high road, the right, the good, and the positive path, however it might be, or might appear to be, at this time in our lives. In its higher connotation, we understand acceptance to be that of the all-pervading spirit of God, which is in us, all around us. And if we're open to it, we can find clear and positive direction. The wonderful gift with, of acceptance allows us to align with the divine. And through this awareness, it can bring our gratitude, thankfulness, and knowing that whatever comes into our lives is a result of the seeds we have sown either in this present life or centuries ago. Since whatever comes must be the harvest of our own sowing, so we accept the knowing that whatever happens, it's moving us forward. So could, we could say, couldn't we, acceptance is the doorway to opportunity. I want to tell you a story about quite a famous man, Paolo Coelho, who you may know as the author of that remarkable book, The Alchemist, well worth another read, which I'm in the process of rereading. Back in the 70s, when Paolo was 30 years old, he was making his way to the top of his career as a recording executive. He was working at CBS in Brazil and had just been invited to the States for a job, and he felt he was on top of the world. Whilst this was going on, he was pushing aside all the time his heart's desire to be a writer. But he rationalized there was no way he could make a living from literature in Brazil. So he abandoned his dream, quieted that inner voice with promises that he, well, he could always write for newspapers from time to time, and then perhaps compose a lyric or two. Now, the day after his invitation to visit the United States in his job, his new boss called and fired him without any further explanation. And he struggled mightily for two years to even find a comparable job to no avail. All the usual arguments arose. How could God do to this to him when he was at the peak of such a promising career? You know how it goes, all our mental aberrations that go on. Now, in the ensuing months, Paolo came to realize that things are brought into our lives that will lead us back to the true path, the one which we contracted to follow when we first incarnated. And I mean in the present life, I'm not talking the very beginning. Sudden closures in our perceived pathway in life 
so often are so hard to accept. Could we course them, call them a course correction and a means for us to express perhaps our hidden gifts, honing and expanding our own unique soul qualities that now have the freedom to express themselves. So instead of resisting and fighting inevitable changes, perhaps we should, in the quiet of our hearts, give thanks for the signpost that has appeared for our next adventure. We may appear temporarily lost, but actually the period between episodes in our lives is simply a pause where we can think about things and find a new direction. In White Eagle's words, if you can apply any incident to your life and accept what happens, you will learn in time to value acceptance. Accept knowing God is wise in his giving and wiser still in his taking away. The whole point is that as the soul evolves and expands in God consciousness, it cannot really lose anything. It cannot really lose anything. For then it knows that nothing is lost in God's creation. Only a limited conscious, consciousness present, prevents that soul from recognizing that all is here and all is present at this given moment, right in the center of our being. You need just now to be reminded of your destiny, of the path upon which your feet have been set. Acceptance also flows into every other area of life, particularly those whose lives touch our own intimately, accepting another person for who they are rather than what you think they should be. Often we hold expectations of one another and often these expectations might be quite high and sometimes we can be disappointed. How much more peaceful and harmonious to accept one another for who they are, warts and all. Speaking of accepting, I want to tell you a story. When, when I was a small child um, with my mother, she used to visit shut-ins in not particularly beautiful parts of London, and one day I went with her. Um, I suppose we'd now call them shut-ins, um, people who couldn't leave their homes. So one day I went along with my mother in a, to a rather dimly lit house in London. There was a very, very old lady in this house. You could barely see across the room. I remember, <laughs> I didn't write this down, but I remember there was a bowl of fruit on the table and it was surrounded by a lot of flies. And I remember as a small child I went to pick up an orange and I remember my mother saying no. <laughs> so I obeyed. Anyway, um, this was a very different old lady. And probably um, because my mother told me that part of her loneliness was because of a separation from a dearly loved companion. Now I discovered that this dearly loved companion had actually been a gorilla. Now you heard correctly, a gorilla. I'm not sure how she came to have such a companion, but she'd had him since she was a tiny baby, and he'd been with her for many years. I'll call him Gilbert because I can't remember his real name. But Gilbert used to fold up the daily newspaper after his mistress had read it, lay it on her companion's lap, his companion's lap, and then come to sit on it, on her lap. They evidently drank tea together, and of course, Gilbert became huge, and he was eventually, of course, sadly, moved to a zoo. The authorities took him away. I remember thinking how much she must have missed her dear and faithful friend. Now, few understood or accepted her for extraordinary choices. Acceptance so often must come when something or someone we have loved is removed. How difficult is that? And so we need to find a way to move onwards in our own life in faith and trust. 
What unites us all in that beautiful spark of the divine is that beautiful spark, the divine, which unites the heart in every living thing. It is there that we can make the connection and put aside the things of the earth and separation can no longer exist. In our reading, White Eagle speaks about Dharma, which in its constricted or tiny form of understanding can mean opportunity, the opportunity of the path that has been laid before us. When we accept what life has to offer without too much struggle, there comes an infinite balm of mercy, which is God's sweet love, smoothing out the path before us, infinitely merciful. Whatever mess or muddle appears to be before us, there's always that healing of wounds and a fresh opportunity offered. You know, when we cease to struggle, life becomes so easy. When we put up our own little barriers, so often in the mind, then it allows to flow, rather as a great boulder in a stream. If you remove the boulder, the stream flows beautifully and smoothly. In White Eagle's words, instead of complaining of this, that, and the other, instead, praise God for all his gifts, all the gifts we've been given. And the greatest of these is life itself and the ever-growing consciousness of a life that is purer, more harmonious, more beautiful than anything yet known on earth. What a glorious opportunity is yours. What a gracious path lies before us all. And as we remember that gracious and beautiful path that lies before us all, we're able to lift everybody else up because our influence becomes one of joy and positivity instead of dragging everybody down. So, in those inimitable words, let the light shine from us, however small, however flickering, we all have a beautiful light to shine forth. And it surely does. So let us take now that word of acceptance in its highest form. The acceptance of the gifts of the divine. A bread and wine. Bread which we're given to keep on strongly on this earth. Whatever happens, whatever unfolds, we stand strong, tall and steady with our hearts open, as we see within our midst the Lord Christ, holding aloft the bread of life, and seeing this bread infused with a beautiful light, strength, encouragement, joy, offered to us freely, To our innermost heart. And so that bread is indeed offered to each one of us. Let us accept, absorb, and feel that divinity. Find greater life within the heart. And then from his heart, so graciously is offered the wine of spirit, the elixir of love, offered again to each one which we may accept and drink deeply of all the goodness and beauty without any barriers anymore. The light which is all love. In the silence, let us absorb those gifts of the Spirit. Lord Christ, from the essence of his love.
And let us this day find new life, real life, as we move through our purpose, our challenge, our privilege upon this earth. And may God's blessing rest in the name of the Father, Mother, Son, and peace. Amen. Amen. Amen.